Hi, welcome back to my channel. I am Divya Choti Das and in today's video, I want to answer the question that why is it that nothing can travel faster than the speed of light? And by nothing, I mean anything that has some kind of a mass. Any object that has some kind of a mass, it can never reach the speed of light. No matter how much energy you provide, no matter how much force you apply, it can never reach the speed of light. And I will try to answer this question by looking at the concept of relativistic energy. So you must know that uh, in relativistic mechanics or in relativity, the concept of mass and the concept of energy is equivalent. Einstein said that anything that has mass has an equivalent energy associated with it and anything that has energy can be converted into mass given the right mechanism. Now these kind of uh, transformation happen all the time in nuclear physics and in high energetic collisions. But as far as the theory is concerned, this is a very valid point. Now in classical mechanics, by classical I mean the pre-Einstein mechanics or the Newtonian mechanics, the concept of mass, the concept of energy was very much separate. It was Albert Einstein who for the very first time created a bridge between the concept of mass and energy. So for example, if there is an object at rest, let's suppose I have this pen and it is at rest, then it has some kind of a mass. By mass, it occupies space, it has matter. If I provide it some kind of a force, it will experience acceleration and I can obtain the amount of mass by saying that the force divided by the acceleration is its mass, right? So if it has some kind of a mass, then according to relativity, that mass is associated with some kind of an energy. Now I'm going to mention this mass that I measure at rest to be a rest mass, okay? So this has a very specific name which is known as rest mass and rest mass is used to distinguish between relativistic mass which is supposedly the mass of an object in motion. So whenever we talk about mass of an object, we usually talk about the mass of an object when the object is at rest. So the object is at rest, let's suppose it has a mass also known as rest mass or invariant mass of M0. In that kind of a situation, the energy associated with that rest mass is given by M0 C square. I can write this as, uh, let's suppose E0. Okay, what is E0? E0 is the rest mass energy. Every object that has some kind of a mass or rest mass has a rest energy associated with it. And in the right circumstances, via, via the right mechanism, that mass can be converted into energy. For example, nuclear explosions. So the atom bomb is the greatest example of this kind of a rest mass energy. Now, what about the energy of an object in motion? This is the energy of an object at rest. Now, if the object is moving, it not only contains the rest mass energy, but it also has some kinetic energy because of its motion. So if an object is in motion in that kind of a situation, the total energy of the object can be written in a very similar fashion by saying that it is equal to gamma m0 c square. So the total amount of energy, which is also known as relativistic energy. So relativistic energy is the total amount of energy of a body which is in motion that contains not only the rest mass energy, but also the kinetic energy as a result of its motion. So the relativistic energy has a similar form. However, there is this particular term gamma. So the gamma m0 c square is the relativistic energy where gamma has the form gamma is equal to 1 upon root over 1 minus v square upon c square. Simple. The rest mass energy has this form. The relativistic energy has this particular form. Now, if the object is in motion, it also has some kind of a kinetic energy by virtue of its motion. The kinetic energy by virtue of its motion is the relativistic energy minus the rest mass energy. Quite simple. The kinetic energy or the relativistic kinetic energy, I must say, is the energy possessed by a body by virtue of its motion, which is actually equal 
to the total relativistic energy minus the rest mass energy due to its mass all right so this can be simplified to gamma m naught c square minus m naught c square is equal to gamma minus 1 this is gamma okay this is not r this is gamma minus 1 m naught c square this is the relativistic kinetic energy let me write down rel in the subscript this is the relativistic kinetic energy of an object that is moving at a velocity very very high or velocity is comparable to the speed of light now in the newtonian mechanics kinetic energy has a definite form in the newtonian mechanics the kinetic energy let's suppose i call it the newtonian kinetic energy the newtonian kinetic energy which i'm going to call as uh, k e n e w all right so the newtonian kinetic energy is equal to half m v square and by m we mean the m naught which is the rest mass all right this form of a kinetic energy is valid when we are talking about objects that are moving at velocities very very less compared to the speed of light however when objects are traveling at very very high speeds speeds comparable to the speed of light in that situation this expression is not valid we need to have an expression that is consistent with the principles of relativity which is this one and in fact i can show that this relativistic kinetic energy is a general expression and for those situations where velocity is very very less compared to the speed of light it simply becomes our newtonian kinetic energy so we can do that by doing simply a binomial expansion okay so if i bring this here all right and i just substitute gamma factor here gamma is this so the kinetic energy or the relativistic kinetic energy is equal to gamma minus 1 so gamma is 1 upon root over 1 minus v square upon c square minus 1 m naught c square right now if i want to approximate let's suppose that i am interested in approximating for velocities very very less compared to the speed of light in that kind of a situation what does this become this simply becomes the kinetic energy for relativistic scenarios is equal to 1 minus v square upon c square to the power minus half minus 1 and this bracket m naught c square now what is this this is 1 minus v square upon c square where v upon c is a very small number so v upon c is less than 1 if we do a binomial expansion of this particular term this can be written as the first term is going to come out to be 1 and then i'm going to have minus minus half so plus 1 upon 2 v square upon c square now other terms are going to come right there are many many terms which are going to come after this but because we are doing the approximation of v very very less compared to the speed of light so that means v square upon c square is already a very small number v square upon c square is already an extremely tiny number and higher order terms are going to be so so small that for this particular approximation we can ignore that so if we ignore the higher order terms because v is very less compared to the speed of light then i just write minus one here and then you have m naught c square so one and one gets cancelled and finally you have half v square upon c square m naught c square so c square c square gets cancelled and you end up getting half m naught v square which is nothing but the newtonian kinetic energy so this is the kinetic energy in newtonian mechanics that means the kinetic energy for relativistic cases is a general expression of the kinetic energy that tends towards the newtonian kinetic energy for very very small speeds speeds very very less compared to the speed of light so this is the relativistic kinetic energy all right so this is a discussion on the relativistic kinetic energy but now coming back to our original question why can nothing travel faster than the speed of light we can easily demonstrate that using our expression of the relativistic kinetic energy all right so let me rub this first okay the reason i have uh, first spent some time with the relativistic kinetic energy is because i can apply the work energy theorem you see when you try to increase the velocity of an object you have to give it some kind of an external energy if i have let's suppose this simple object it is at rest it just has its rest mass energy if i want it moving 
then I must give it some kind of a force, put it in a potential or do some kind of a work so that it starts accelerating or so that it starts traveling at greater velocities. Right. And the total amount of energy that I will have to give so that it starts traveling at a particular velocity in an ideal case scenario has to do with the work energy theorem. It tells us that the total amount of work done is just a difference in the kinetic energy. So for example, if there is an object at rest, okay, if there is an object at rest, what is the kinetic energy of that object, whether it is relativistic or whether it is uh, Newtonian, the kinetic energy is quite simply zero because it is at rest. But now if I want this object to move at very, very high velocities V, it is moving. So in that kind of a situation, the kinetic energy of this object in motion is simply equal to this gamma minus one m naught c square where gamma contains the velocity term. All right. So it simply means that if I want to accelerate an object from rest to that object moving at very high velocities of v, then I must provide it with some kind of an energy. That means I must do some kind of a work. And the amount of work that I need to do is simply equal to the differences in the kinetic energy of the final and the initial state. So the difference in the kinetic energy of the final and the initial state is simply this minus zero, which is gamma minus one m naught c square. So the total amount of work I need to do to accelerate an object from rest to very high velocities is simply equal to this under ideal situations. All right. So what does this expression tell us? This expression simply tells us the amount of energy that I need to provide to a system so that it starts traveling at a particular velocity v. Now, if you take a look at this particular expression gamma minus 1 m naught c square and plot it in a graph where the x-axis represent v, then what sort of a graph I'm going to get? Well, let me draw it and show it to you. So this is a very simple graph where in the y-axis, I write down the work done or the external energy that we provide to the object so as to accelerate it to a certain kind of velocity. And in the x-axis, you have the velocity. First, let us write down the Newtonian kinetic energy, which is half m naught v square. So the Newtonian kinetic energy or the work done in a Newtonian case is directly proportional to V square, right? So the graph for the Newtonian case will look like some kind of a parabola, you know, it looks like some kind of a parabola. Something like this. Okay, so this is the uh, work done in the Newtonian case where we represent the kinetic energy by that particular expression. So in the Newtonian case, as you can see, the more and more energy we provide, the greater the velocity of the object. In fact, it goes beyond the speed of light. According to Newtonian mechanics, there is no limit or a speed barrier to which an object can be accelerated. In theory, you can accelerate an object to infinite velocities. You can provide energy to an object so that it starts traveling at very, very high velocities. However, that is not the case in our situation where we are dealing with this particular relativistic kinetic energy expression. In the case of relativistic dynamics, there is a particular limit to which the object can be accelerated or to which the object can start traveling at a particular velocity. If you represent this, so gamma minus one is simply nothing but this is equal to one upon root over 1 minus v square upon c square. If I write it down properly, this is gamma is equal to 1 upon root over 1 minus v square upon c square. Here you have m naught c square and here you have minus 1, so minus m naught c square, right? So this is the case for the total amount of work done to accelerate an object from rest to some velocity v. And if I plot this, then this will initially for the lower velocities, it's going to coincide with the Newtonian case, okay? It's going to be similar to the Newtonian case, but after some time, when velocities approach the speed of light, there is going to be a divergence so that the kinetic energy will tend to infinity before it reaches the speed of light. This is the Einstein case, or relativistic case. That was the Newtonian case. This is, what, this is Einstein's relativistic case. 
So as you can see, the more and more I do work or I provide energy to the body, its velocity increases. But the moment this velocity reaches near the speed of light, I can provide more and more energy, but the increase in velocity is not going to be much. No matter how much energy I provide, the velocity will never reach the speed of light. In fact, theoretically speaking, at the speed of light, the amount of energy that we have to provide to the body is going to be infinity, which simply means that it's not going to happen. No matter how much energy we provide to a body, it's never going to reach the speed of light. Do you see that? Initially, giving energy raises the velocity. Giving energy raises the velocity. But after some time, giving more and more energy does not raise the velocity by that much. In fact, a particular limit is reached where no matter how much energy you provide, the velocity does not increase significantly at all. This is why the speed of light is a speed barrier in our universe. It is the ultimate barrier which no object that has mass can cross. Why do I say no object that has mass? Because there is an M0 term here. If there is a particle that does not have any rest mass, in that case, this equation is not going to be valid. In fact, there are certain particles which does not have a rest mass. Those are known as massless particles and they in fact do travel at the speed of light. But keeping aside the massless particle for every object that has some kind of a mass, you can keep on giving it energy, you can keep on pushing it, you can keep on giving it force no matter how much you give, it is never going to reach the speed barrier. In fact, I can also write the relativistic force expression here. So the relativistic force expression, if I write it down, so is equal to, F is equal to Ma upon 1 minus V square upon C square to the power 3 upon 2. Now I have not derived this in this particular video. Maybe I'll make another video and derive this particular expression. But what it happens is that in Newtonian mechanics, the expression for uh, or the relationship between force and acceleration is F is equal to Ma. That means if you give unit force to a unit mass, it will create unit acceleration. But in the case of relativistic scenario, that expression is not exactly valid. A more general expression is given by F is equal to Ma upon 1 minus V square upon C square to the power 3 by 2, which simply means that at low velocities, a unit force can create unit acceleration for a unit mass. But for very, very high velocities, a unit force is not going to create a unit acceleration. In fact, for very, very high velocities, larger amounts of force when you give to the object will lead to lesser amounts of acceleration so that as you approach the speed of light, no matter how much force you provide to an object, as you push it to increase its velocity, its acceleration is going to be very, very minute. That is why in particular accelerators, when electrons or protons are being accelerated in some kind of an accelerator, no matter how much energy you provide, you can never really reach the speed of light. You can always give more and more energy. You can always provide more and more force to the object. And the more and more energy you provide is going to create even little and little increments in its velocity so that it never reaches the speed barrier. So this is what it is in relativity, which is a more general theory compared to Newtonian mechanics. Objects have a speed barrier. They can never reach the speed barrier, which is actually the speed at which light photons travel. We call it the speed of light. It is this speed barrier that no matter how much energy you provide to an object, that those objects can never really reach. So that is all. I hope you found the discussion interesting because I found it very interesting. So maybe in the next video, I will derive this relativistic force expression. All right. So that is all for today. Thank you very much.